thank you so much for joining us. My name is Marjorie Curette and I'm with Silver Peak Immigration. Today, I'm really excited to have with us Patrick from Selfit by Prometrics. And today we're gonna to be talking about some options when it comes to taking the English language exam that's necessary for Canadian immigration. So Patrick, thank you so much for coming here today and allowing us to, to speak about this. I know you always have really great information for people. Um, I thought we would first start off with talking about what CELPIT stands for. So I'm yeah, just going to, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it is a, it is an acronym. So it stands for Canadian English Language Proficiency Index Program. So we just say CELPIT for short. Yes, that's a good idea. It's, it's quite the mouthful, but I, I think it explains it completely about what exactly it is that, that it's for. Um, a little bit about you. I know that you are a Ryerson graduate from Toronto and still in Toronto. Yeah. So I'm sure the weather is not that much different between here and there. No, we're getting uh, quite a bit of rain today, but uh, yeah, I just can't wait for summer. I'm glad that the winter's over and uh, yeah, I'm in the, in the big city. Awesome. And you've been yeah. at Selpit for over four years at this point, correct? Yes. Yeah. Time really flies. It's been uh, almost four and a half years and I've learned a lot and I've learned actually a lot about newcomers as well and, and the path that many of them have to take to, to come to Canada. Yeah, that's that's so important. So again, CELPIP is one of the English exams that Canada accepts for immigration purposes. The other ones being the one that many people I know speak about, which is ILIS. But it's really great that there is this alternative. And I, and for myself, I've taken the ILIS as well. And even though I'm from the United States and English is my first language, and people may be surprised about that, but for immigration purposes, everyone, regardless of where they're coming from, have, they have to take an English language exam. So yeah. when I took it, I would have loved to have something that was in the North American accent. I mean, I did well on it because it is my native language, but I remember sitting through the eyelids and there are differences with how things are pronounced. So could you speak more to some of those differences between the eyelids and the self ed exam? Yeah, definitely. So uh, given that the, the first C in CELPIP stands for Canadian, so the test does use Canadian accents, uh, specifically when you're doing the listening section. So you're going to be listening to audio clips uh, in a Canadian accent. So if you've already been, you know, living, working or studying in Canada, uh, then it will be an accent that you're familiar with. And uh, actually, the entire test utilizes North American English. But um, but that doesn't mean that you can't use uh, British English or another uh, dialect. Uh, you, you won't lose marks for that, but the test itself will be in uh, North American English. That's great. And I also read that when it comes to the writing section, it doesn't matter if you're using the North American way of writing or the Canadian, the American or the British, that you're not going to get points marked off for the spelling yeah. portion of it. So that's that's a great advantage as well. That's correct. Just like Canada, we welcome all all people, all dialects. So yeah, you won't lose marks for that. So just use the uh, dialect of English that you're most comfortable in. And um, yeah, and then I'm sure everybody will uh, do fine. That's fantastic. And just to let everyone know, when it comes to self if that can be utilized not only for permanent residency pathways, but also for citizenship, correct? Yes, that's correct. We actually have a specific CELPIP test uh, for people that are applying for citizenship, uh, because when you're applying for citizenship, uh, you only have to prove your listening and speaking skills. Uh, it's not like immigration where you have to prove the four categories. Uh, so we do have a CELPIP general LS standing for listening and speaking only test. Um, so this is actually unique to CELPIP. Uh, other English tests typically don't have this available. Um, so the test is cheaper because it's only two sections. So it's $195 Canadian plus tax. And it's only about an hour long uh, as opposed oh. to the three hours of uh, CELPIP general test. Yeah. No, that's, that's a really nice option. And yeah. I understand that the company also offers an academic version of the test for those looking for taking something similar for university, correct? Yes, correct. So we actually, uh, CELPIP is our general English test. So the academic test that we offer has another name. So it's called kale, which is pronounced the same as the uh, the vegetable. 
uh, which I'm not a huge fan of, uh, to be honest, but uh, <laughs> it's very healthy. But uh, it's it's C-A-E-L. So it stands for Canadian Academic English Language Test. Um, it's similar to, to CELPIP uh, in the way that it's delivered. So you do have to go to a test center, uh, but it can also be taken online as well. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. And um, I was also noticing that some of the major differences between ILETS and the CELPIP is that the listening and speaking portion is different. So it's a, it's a bit longer, am I correct? But the writing portion is shorter than the ILETS. Uh, yeah, I'm not, not too familiar with IELTS, but basically, yeah, the speaking section is about 10 to 15 minutes long, uh, whereas the other three components are just under an hour, so 50 to 55 minutes long. Okay, okay. Yeah. No, I, I thought it was really interesting to hear it in the accent that you know I'm most familiar with, and I think a lot of people, like you said, if you're studying here, if you've worked here, this is the accent that you're probably going to hear more often when you're speaking yeah. to your colleagues or just on your day-to-day -day life. And I think that's going to translate into a different kind of exam experience. And I have, um, Patrick, if you could play, there is a sample that we have from the, from the test that gives you a, a little snapshot of what you could potentially be listening to when you take this exam. Definitely. I'll do that right now. So, and I will bring up the screen so that sure. we can show people what this would look like. So this is one of the examples of what one of the practice tests look like online that is available for people that visit the CELPEP website. And in this conversations, just so that the audience can get an example of what um, they would, what kind of accent they'd be listening to. This conversation is between two workers. A woman is having some challenges finishing a project. So I'm gonna press next. And then hopefully people listening can get a sense of what kind of question they may encounter on the listening section of this. Yeah, so I'll just make sure my volume is turned up and here we go. You don't look so good, Anne. You look actually, let me play that back again and think the volume's a bit low. And hey, just give me one second here. No problem. You don't look so good, Anne. You look pale. Is everything all right with you? I'm okay. I just haven't slept much lately, and I guess it's starting to show. I've been working on a couple of projects, and the work is taking much longer than I thought it would. I've been up most nights writing the reports that are due the next week. You should get some more sleep. Why don't you finish the reports after work, before you go home for the day? I can't. I have to pick up my son at the daycare right after work. And when I get home, I have to fix dinner and watch my son until he falls asleep around 10. That's such a late bedtime. I know. He's five months old and we are still struggling with bedtime. Can your husband help you? He helps around the house a lot. He takes care of the cleaning, the laundry, and cooks breakfast after work every day. But I'm on my own with the bedtime routine, unfortunately. Breakfast after work? Yes. He works the night shift. He gets home around 6.30 in the morning, and he cooks us breakfast before he goes to bed. Sounds like a very stressful situation. Can you ask for an extension on the project? It is pretty stressful, but I can't really ask for an extension. I'm being considered for a promotion, and I'm afraid that if I ask for one, my boss might think I'm not competent to take on more responsibilities. I don't want to risk my chances. And if I get the promotion, my husband will be able to work day shifts again, which would be more convenient for our family. Is there anything I can do to help you? Not really, but thanks for the offer. My husband is taking Friday off. And my mom is picking up my son for the weekend so I can finish the reports and hopefully get some sleep. So obviously there are some issues. And what I've noticed that is important for these listening sections is really you need that attention span to capture the information too. And I think that not having to worry about that extra level of 
you know, if, if the, the accent component is just going to translate, like I said, or to a different experience. So in this case, we heard the passage, right? Um, it's about one and a half to two minutes long. Then you click next. And you have a series of um, answers to the question. So you listen to what they're asking, and then you need to choose the best answer for that. Um, the other thing that I think is really interesting about self-hip is that a lot of people who are used to not doing things on the on the computer so much, you're, you're used to going to the IELTS exams and sitting there and doing at least part of the test in um, pencil and paper, right? And then having someone look at it on the other end. But so much of so many of us spend our time on computers, utilizing the keyboard at work or for school. It's it's, we're used to a different format. And I think that CELPIP having everything computerized, like for this and even the writing section is going to, is, it translates to a different experience. Am I right? So even for here, this is a multiple choice section, but you're also for the different sections, including writing, you're also going to be doing everything online. Am I correct, Patrick? Yes. Yeah. So you uh, you take it out of test center, uh, but you're you're doing it online. So uh, yeah, the computers are the medium that most people are using now. So it should be uh, an experience that you're familiar with. Right. And my understanding is that the amount of time it takes to get your results back is also different. Yeah, it's four to five days, uh, not business days, just regular days. And the results will be in your CellPip account. So you'll have to sign in uh, to your account on the CellPip website. And um, you can actually download your score report as a PDF uh, onto your computer, which is accepted. Uh, you can apply online for Canadian immigration or citizenship. <clears throat> so one of the things that I'm able to do as a network member is that I can help facilitate that. Right. So as a network member with CellPIP, I'm able to help register people directly. And the result of that is that the scores that they get, can, I can also have direct access to, which is just one less step for people to have to worry about when they're already submitting all sorts of documents and forms. So the people who are part of the, the CellPIP network have that ability to help our clients a bit further, which, which is great. And I think being able to hear an example of what this sample test sounds like will also help people realize that there are some differences between the two exams, especially if you've taken the other one before that, um, you know, and honestly, I always tell clients that you have to do what's best for you, right? Maybe if they had studied in the UK, that would be a different preference. But for people here in Canada who have worked here or even in the United States, I think it's great to have this option. So yep. it's just fantastic. So tell me a little bit more about your test centers. I know that you there are many options in the US, but there are also more places opening up overseas with some new additions recently. Yeah, we're very pleased to announce that uh, over the past couple of months, we just opened in uh, in Europe, our first test center in Europe in London, England. So we actually have two test centers in uh, London in the UK. Um, and then we, we're also extremely pleased to announce that we opened our first test center in Africa in uh, Lagos, Nigeria. So um, yeah, so uh, with Prometric, we're, we're really expanding and, and we're trying to become more convenient to people all around the world uh, to provide this other option to, to prove their English. That's awesome. And what about for people in the Middle East? Do you have a location look there where they can take this, the self pip exam? Yeah, so we do have uh, both our general and academic uh, test centers, uh, self pip and Kale, which you can take in Dubai. Um, and we're also very happy to announce that our academic tests uh, in the UAE, you have the option of taking it at the test center or from home uh, with wow. Kale online or Kale at a test center. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Absolutely. And for people who have who are following us, um, I do want to say that for a limited time only, um, Patrick has been so kind to provide us some uh, a code that can be redeemed. So this can be redeemed. Currently, you can see it scrolling at the bottom of the screen or up to two hours from this slide. 
And so this is an additional resource if you would like to, you know, start practicing for this test now. And always the best time to start is, is sooner rather than later. So you will see that code again scrolling at the bottom of the screen. I will again post it later on. But Patrick, what is the best way to start preparing for these exams? What are your recommendations? Um, that's a great question. I was just going to say one thing. So just keep in mind for the discount code, it's to redeem the uh, reading and writing version of the Celtic Accelerate. Okay. Uh, so there, there is a bundle, but just make sure that you're choosing the uh, Celtic Accelerate reading and writing online, and then the voucher will work. Um, oh, fantastic. So something to keep in mind. But uh, in terms of where to start your preparation, I would say, you know, first of all, start early. Uh, as soon as you have you know realized that you need to take one of these tests. Um, what I would say is a good starting point is the free practice test because it mimics it's the same format um, and you, you can get used to the timing, uh, the different sections, what types of questions will be asked, how am I expected to answer them. Um, the free sample test on the website will also give you approximate listening and reading scores so you can kind of see where you're at. Um, in the scoring uh, scoring scheme. Um, so yeah, take the free free sample test as a starting point. We also have uh, live weekly webinars that we run on the CellPIP website, uh, which is cellpip.ca slash webinars. So we have webinars that are on the speaking section, the writing section, the reading section. Uh, they are free. If you're not able to attend the live ones, we have a YouTube channel which has recordings of all these webinars that you can watch, you know, whenever you have time on demand. Um, we also released uh, podcasts as well that we're, we're releasing a new one every week, and it's a good way to practice listening skills. Um, we normally talk about fun ways to improve your English, whether it's watching movies that use a lot of English or even playing video games that utilize English. So uh, there's a different topic every week. Um, and uh, those would be my, my best recommendations. We also have um, partners that offer prep classes if you want, like the, the classroom experience with the teacher. Um, and those can be delivered online or in person at one of our centers. Oh, fantastic. So it seems like there's a lot of options, but there's no excuse to not do well. No excuse. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, is there any other advice for, for people to prepare? Or I think you covered a lot. I mean, from webinars to samples to podcasts. I, I feel like there is a lot there that people can start utilizing to train themselves. And I know that some people, they, they already maybe use English a lot. I, I know people in the UAE especially you know, English is really quite common to use there. However, yeah. I would still strongly emphasize to give yourself some time, right, to take some of these practice tests that are on the self hip site, and that will help gauge how much time you really need to prepare. Because there are a lot of people who are very confident, as they should be, because they utilize English a lot, but every test is different. And now that we have something that is completely online, there, it's a really great opportunity to see, well, what are your test taking skills like? It may have been quite a while since the last time you took a test and yep. knowing the format and the feel and to help you. Because one thing I thought was interesting when I when I was looking at the videos and the listening section was that some of the questions when they would refer to the characters in the videos, they would actually refer to them as man with sweater or man with short, you know, and I wouldn't have thought automatically to to see what people were wearing in order to answer the questions but if it's a video i should be taking in everything so again utilizing those practice tests really help give you a sense of how to best tackle the exam and with the resources self hip is offering anyway there is there's no reason to to not be able to give it 100 percent. so thank you so much um, is there anything that else that you think might be of interest to people attending today? Um, we talked about the different locations within the exams, um, the difference between CELPIP and ILITS. Again, we have this really great uh, promotional um, opportunity to, to take part in uh, being able to redeem. Again, you said, what was the difference? It's 
it's the code, this code, but it's for the self hip accelerate study program for what the, the speaking you said? Um, it's for the uh, the reading and writing. So there's actually, yeah, there's a, a separate reading and writing self hip accelerate. So just make sure you redeem that one on the online store uh, for the code to work. So there is a bundle, but it won't work on the bundle. It will work on the reading and writing version of accelerate. Okay, great. Well, thank yeah. you so much for that. And again, self hip it being a, a great option, the C A E L also for for universities. Um, and I would I would imagine that all Canadian universities accept C A E L for for the purpose of looking for admissions. Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So well, all Canadian universities and all public colleges uh, accept Kale. Uh, most colleges in Canada, except Kale, some of the private ones haven't come on board yet, but we're uh, we're working to make that happen. But uh, but yes, it basically has very similar acceptance to the academic versions of other English uh, proficiency tests. And I would imagine that pre-tests and sample tests are also available. Um. Yes, we stopped that actually uh, through the pandemic. Uh, okay. We offer it in Toronto as well as Vancouver. Uh, we might still offer it in Vancouver, but I'm not sure. But in Toronto, we've stopped the pretest for now. Um, it was due to the pandemic, so we'll definitely post news on our social media if we do uh, reinstate the pretest that you can go to one of the test centers and you know take a free in-person real testing experience uh, pretest. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Again, it's good for people to know that they have options. If yep. you are in the United States or in Canada, cell PIP may be the one that you're more, more comfortable with. If you are more comfortable with a computerized exam, again, cell PIP or the CAEL, these are great options for you. So thank you again, Patrick, for coming on today and explaining so much to us. And also this um, promotion that is available on your website. I think it'll be useful to a lot of people. So thanks again. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, yeah, best of luck to everybody in your, your journey coming to Canada. And uh, I hope that this information helps you to make a, a more educated decision. And uh, yeah, stay safe. And thanks so much, Marjorie, for inviting me on. It's been a pleasure. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. All right, thanks. Bye-bye.